Welcome to Grassroot Ohio, conversations with everyday people working on important issues here in Columbus and all around Ohio. I'm Carolyn Harding, and today I'm talking with musicians, Alan Harrell, Isabel Trotwine, Mark Dumm of the Cleveland Orchestra. 250 years ago, Ludwig von Beethoven was born on December 16, 1770. And to honor his timeless musical genius and to bring the world together, the global ode to joy was conceived. Groups from all over the world created and submitted mus musical videos celebrating Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, Ode to Joy. And you, members of the Cleveland Orchestra, are one of the few North American, and as far as I can tell, the only Ohio group to take part. In this time of COVID-19, isolation, death, divisive, destructive politics, racism, police violence, hunger, and fear, we need connection, humanity, generosity, love, and yes, joy. Thank you for joining me today. So you got the Cleveland Orchestra involved with this Global Ode to Joy project. You organized and created the video. And um, Alan, you're the artist, you have the artistic concept. Isabel, you're the producer. And Mark, you're the videographer and editor. I would like you to tell us how you got involved with this and what it took to make it happen. Let's start with you, Alan. Sure. I had the idea um, about 18 months ago um, that we could do something as an orchestra, a little bit unusual, um, that we would do something where we would record around our city. And so we had some conversations. I, I sent some emails to um, um, Andre, who is our uh, CEO, and we had some meetings and then COVID hit and we weren't able to do anything. We weren't able to follow through with it. And so once the restrictions started to um, ease up a bit, I called Mark and I talked to Isabel as well. And we thought it might be a good time in the summer to do this project. And we had a discussion and we decided with Beethoven 9 um, for the reason that you mentioned that, that they were having this Ode to Joy project and it was his 250th anniversary and also because the message of joy and so it was a perfect combination of things and so we um went around all over the city and i would say mark and isabel mostly went all uh, all over the city recording the cleveland orchestra and the cleveland orchestra chorus in different um, parts of the city some of the most iconic locations in the city and then we put it together with this music and it was one of those things carolyn where it was kind of hard to screw it up you know, we had great music, we have um, great musicians, and we've got a great city. And so that combination of things is is unbeatable. And so when we put it all together, Mark did an unbelievable job of editing this music. And we, did, we couldn't do the whole symphony, obviously, and so we had to shrink down 90 minutes of music into about a three-minute clip. Um, where we had the, the chorus involved as well. And so Mark did an amazing job of editing the music and putting all those videos together in a seamless way. So when people watch it, they're able to see their city, see the orchestra, see Ohio, and, and see people working together for this message of, of joy and peace. How about you, Isabel, as the producer, what brought you into the project? Well, I saw Alan's video that he made all by himself, which has a similar concept. Uh, he goes with a cello and it's called Cleveland Box, B-A-C-H, and it's an amazing video. And I I just, I, somehow we were talking, I said, Alan, if you wanna make this happen with the whole orchestra, I wanna be your guy. I will, mm -hmm. I will write the emails, I will organize the locations and you know, ask for, whatever permissions we need to go to Blossom or whatever, I really want to be a part of this. And Alan said, great, I have a tiny baby. <laughs> I, um, I'd appreciate that kind of support. And off we were to the races. And then Mark being willing to carry his equipment all over town and you know, thousands of emails later, we had 105 musicians participate um, in 17 different locations. So it was you know, a little bit of organizing and communicating, but it all was so much fun, a real highlight for me. And all three of you are professional musicians. I mean, that's your job, right? You're musicians first and foremost, right? 
Yes. Right. So you are grassroots in a way. You're producing this video as grassroots producers and creators. And that's fun, isn't it? It's exciting to put on, uh, try something new. So Mark, I see that you have a YouTube channel and, and you um, look, it appears you, you record a lot of musicians. So have you been doing this for a while? I'm sorry, you broke up a second. I think you asked me, have I been doing this for a while? Yeah, have you been re you, um, video videography and editing music for a while? Yes, I, I have been interested in this. Um, I tell people the story that when my kids were born over you know, 25 years ago, I bought a video camera. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's that's when I sort of started to get interested in it. And I, and I have tried to to make good videos. I mean, you know, you need to you need to take your time and you need to know a little bit about uh, lighting and how the cameras work. And I've tried to learn a little bit. So I have been doing it for for quite a while. Um, and my uh, my one of my main gigs here in Cleveland is to do the video production for the Cleveland International Piano Competition. So I've been doing that for a number of years. And um, and more and more, I'm trying to be flexible enough and available for, especially in this last year, for people who have wanted to do projects like this. And uh, a few of my colleagues, not, I don't, you know, uh, not that many, I'd like to do some more, but um, just to be ready uh, for the people who have ideas to do. We just, um, were, uh, one, of the, one of the things I just did, which was really fun, very satisfying to help Trina uh, Struble, our principal harp player, do a, an amazing rendition of Adeste Fidelis or O Come All You Faithful. And um, so it, it is nice to have this equipment and to be ready to help people if they, uh, if they have ideas. Well, right now with COVID um, and not being able to perform live and not, you know, be able to um, being, having video talents and skills is really a, a boon because, I mean, I, I first saw Alan's um, video um, um, was Cleveland Funk and it was really funny and fun. And um, when I was scrolling through the Ode to Joy on your um, Cleveland Orchestra's website. Um, so I'm sorry, Cleveland Orchestra, right? Not Cleveland yeah. Symphony, Cleveland Orchestra. So um, I find that, um, that that video is, imperative right now and online is imperative so you guys have taken that and run with it can you tell me a little bit about it, the interaction that you've had with the um global ode to joy folks has it been pretty um just online or have you had any interaction with them would anybody like to cover that we we haven't had a lot of direct uh it's really what is more uh, ha has happened is the fact that there's a lot of overlapping vision. So the fact that we did this uh, in the time during which the, uh, many people are thinking about Beethoven all around the world is really, it's more of a, uh, a communication in spirit <laughs> than, in actual, uh, than actually coordinating. So everyone's creating pretty much on their own and then submitting and then they're bringing it on. That's sort of what it appears. Not sure. Some, some of it, I think, is, is quite organized between the different groups around the world, uh, and some of it is a little more ad, ad hoc. And ours was an addition uh, to the spirit of Beethoven's anniversary year. Is that a good description, Isabel? <laughs> Can I say honestly that I, ha I haven't heard of the Global Ode to Joy <laughs> Project? <laughs> I wasn't going to admit that. We did that. Yeah, we, <laughs> I, I knew they were uh, they were involved in in these types of productions around the world, but um, yeah, we 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 didn't really envision this as a direct result of communication with them. Well, that's interesting. Well, you guys really have to check it out then, because you are uh, you're in their list of 136 videos. Okay, and that's nice. it's potent and powerful and very connecting. There are videos from all over the world, from very short clips of kids singing happy birthday to Beethoven to ex incredibly professional groups like yours and some very comedic ones as well, like a, a, a carton of eggs singing, um, you know, oh. 
his music. So, I mean, it's really a diverse group. So over the uh, holidays, I encourage you to go to that Ode, Global Ode to Joy webpage and find out. Alan, do you know much about that? Or are you also, I'd heard you're the one it. that made the I'd connection. I'd heard about it before. I'd heard about it before, but um, yeah, I hadn't yeah, had think much you're conversation off. with Alan? them either. Oh, am I muted? Uh, my my internet just told me it was unstable, so let's keep going. Okay, yeah, I had um he I'd heard of it before, but I hadn't had any direct conversation with them either. So um, that's cool that they included us with their with their videos and and um, Yo Yo Ma is such a good person to um, bring everyone together. So it doesn't surprise me that he was sort of spearheading this as well. Um, and you know the fact that we're representing Ohio and representing our country is 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 uh, um, I think a testament to all, all of um, Mark and Isabel's hard work. Well, I think also, you know, how when you create something, you don't always know how it impacts or where it goes, correct? I mean, you you both weren't really aware of this and it's now out in the world under um, Global Ode to Joy. So that's pretty mm. powerful. I'd like yes. to get, I, I would like to talk a little bit about some of these iconic um, places that you um, filmed at. Um, Severance Hall, which is your orchestra hall, Blossom Music Center, Cleveland Museum of Art, the Botanical Gardens, Lake Erie Shore, Historic League Park. Is that the baseball park that is where the Indians played in the, early in the century? Okay, so and I know not, that it's not where they're playing now. Now, too, correct? Yes, we. Um, I had played the national anthem with a group of orchestra mu musicians before, and so. Um, someone had contacted me to um, play the national anthem for opening day, which was in, I think, in July. And so I had this person's contact and I was like, you know, is it possible that we could do this Beethoven 9 project in, in Progressive Field? And she was nice enough to to get us in there. And it was it was a blast. And that was my favorite part of the video, too, was where the horns they were they were playing there and the horns like play this triumphant melody in, in progressive field. And, and you see, um, you know, the Cleveland's skyline in the background. It was, it was really cool. I'm glad to hear the name of the, of the field is progressive field. Mm -hmm. That's pretty, pretty good. All right. Um, I have a, I don't know. Are you familiar with uh, the conductor Marin Alsop? She is the conductor in Baltimore. Mm -hmm because she spearheaded this tour of the, the global um, Ode to Joy. It was going to be a live tour working with many symphonies. And then mm -hmm. when COVID hit, um, then it stopped. And then um, I believe um, YouTube and Google and um, teamed up and helped create the digital as, um, o global Ode to Joy. So. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty impressed with this this um, composer, Marin Alsop. Do you have anything to say about her? Marin Alsop is a, a conductor of note and has been for many decades. I've worked with her many times over the years. She used to come to the St. Louis Symphony when I was a member there, and she has conducted us here as well. She's one of the first pioneer female conductors of a major symphony orchestra. She also at one point won the MacArthur Genius Grant and donated all that money to start uh, string programs for inner city kids in Baltimore. So she is truly an inspiration for me, uh, both as a conductor, female conductor, um, community grassroots activist, and just a powerful, wonderful advocate for music and change and music helping create community change. Yeah, I'm, I was very impressed when I read a little bit about her. Um, and I think this whole, this whole global Ode to Joy was her baby, her mm -hmm. brainchild. And so this is what's coming just expansive. Um, can you tell our group a little bit about Beethoven? Most people know that he did eventually go deaf, but can you give us just why, or a little bit about him and why he's still so timely? Hmm. 
Who would like to take that well, on? Well, I'd like to, to say, I know that there has been a little bit of political furor around Beethoven recently. Um, and I, 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 although the heart may be right about that, I just, I feel um, that it's not being fair to Mr. Beethoven who lived in another time. I mean, you have to judge people in the context of their, um, of their, of their lives and someone as you say, you pointed out the word uh, progressive. Um, someone can be exceedingly progressive, and and I believe Beethoven was in his time. He was very much uh, a um, uh, he was uh, a fought in his own way for the um, for the common man, and uh, in his time, I think he was very much a, a spearhead of what at the time were progressive ideas. But now if we try to judge him according to this, to the environment that we're in right now, that no one can, can be taken out of their context, mm -hmm. especially who lived 250 years ago and judged by today's standards or, or judged by today's um, standard of behavior or, or, or standard of speech. And uh, no one is going to stand up to that. And, and I think it's a shame if we don't recognize the um, the the uh, motivations and the the true spirit that that Beethoven as a real uh, um, pioneer or or uh, he was a bit of a firebrand for um, what we would call progressive ideas in his time and it would just be a shame if if people didn't give him the credit for being that that uh, pioneering uh, 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 proponent of the common man. Um, just because of today's standards of what progressive thinking is, which again, the, 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 the spirit is the same. The outward manifestation is different across the centuries. Yeah. <laughs> this is Carolyn Harding with Grassroot Ohio, and I'm talking with Alan Harrell, Isabel um, Trout, Troutwein, and Mark. Um, they're all three musicians with the Cleveland Orchestra, and I would like to continue that question. Isabella, you were about to say something about Beethoven. Well, maybe some people and uh, uh, listening to your show have you know, not been reading lately much about the French Revolution, but I think it deserves mentioning since we did record the Ode to Joy, where that came from. So the high point of the symphony number no. nine is all brothers embrace and brothers in this case, being of the time, like Mark just mentioned, it means all, all humans embrace. And Beethoven was an incredible revolutionary for his time. He was one of the first generation musicians who refused to work at a court. He wanted to be a self-made man. He lived off of the money that his teaching brought in and his publishing brought in, and he was very proud of that. And he truly believed in equality. These three words of the French Revolution, liberty, liberté, égalité, fraternité. So equality, liberty, and brotherhood. And that is what marks his music. And that what is what always stands out to me. When I, I believe the reason that Beethoven's music speaks so powerfully to so many people is because this what Mark just mentioned, the spirit of fighting, of fighting for what's right, of fighting for your highest beliefs. And, to, you know, there's so many great letters by Beethoven where he says, do you think I care about your lousy violin when I write my music? He would hear this, these voices, the, the music would come to his head and he would write it down. And it was for him, he was directly connecting to his ideals or his, he, you know, he was purposefully not beholden to a specific church institution, but he considered himself very spiritual, actually was well read in Hindi and Buddhist script. Um, so he was a very interesting, forward thinking, independent mind in a time when that was, at least to my knowledge, not all that common. And this, this fighting for what you believe is right comes forward so clearly, ba, 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 you know, it's right there and it grabs our attention because I think it speaks to each human in every time. It's very universal what he believed in. And that is why I always feel so touched to tears when I actually when I, when I hear some of these things that he wrote that encourage us all to be 
at our strongest when the times are hardest. And how about, um, how about his deafness? Um, can you, uh, can one of you or whoever would like to address the issue of his deafness, being a musician who loses his hearing? Who would like, um, Alan, sure. what do you, how do you feel about that one? It's one of those things as people who can hear um, that it's hard to understand um, how much it affected him. And Isabel mentioned his letters and he talks about it in his letters, um, how, um, how difficult that was and how it was just such a, um, a soul wrenching problem for him. And, you know, he was, he was concerned about like what other people would think and, and, you know, his own ability to, to hear the music that he created was lost. And so, um, I wonder too, like how much of that, like if, if he had not gone deaf, would he have still created um, the same music? I don't think so. I think the struggle was important and difficult obviously for him, but it was important and the world got a gift out of it. And that is this music that speaks to, to struggle, that speaks to triumph, that speaks to pain. And I think because Beethoven went through that, I think we can all benefit. And, you know, I was just to, to come back to, to um, this year, um, I was just thinking about like all the things that we have had to endure with COVID and all the struggles. Well, one of the, you know, for us personally, we wouldn't have made this video if it had not been, this situation had come. And, you know, the old saying is, is we, we want to make um, lemonade out of lemons. And I think um, we've done that in a small way. And I think Beethoven did that in an amazing way of giving um, humanity a gift that um, that is 250 years later, 200 years later, is still reaping fruit. So so I think the struggle is is important and um, for all of us to embrace it is it, difficult as that is in our lives. We nobody wants trouble and nobody wants hardship, but I think good things can come out of it. I think we're all feeling heartbreak and, and um, isolated. And he was increasingly felt feeling isolated because of his hearing. And, and then the, the, the hopefulness that comes out in this ninth symphony, his last symphony is um, it brings people to tears. I mean, it did me. I mean, I, I've been studying it the past couple of days just because it's fascinating. And um, I, I, I see my 92 year old parents who have, who are, you know, fortunately I have one sister out in California, but they're pretty much isolated, you know, and lots of piece, people are, are isolated and lots of people have suffered great loss at this time. So mm -hmm. I find this powerfully um, hopeful and joyful and what people need right now. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think one of the hardest things about COVID, of course, people getting sick, but it's the mental aspect of it. And like, uh, just like you said, being isolated. And, and I think for Beethoven, especially um, w with his with his illness, um, it, it forced him inward to himself. And, and in his late works, when he was completely deaf, um, there's almost, um, a, I don't know how Isabel and Mark, you would describe it, but it's, it's almost, you can almost hear the, the, the um, anguish that he was going through mentally, and it comes through in some the, some amazing music. And um, besides the the ode to joy, there's um, we've we've recorded um, the um, Grossa Fugue for it's for string quartet. It's for four players. Um, the the Cleveland Orchestra has played it many times with a string group, and so it, that's one of those pieces that it's just these four people just like almost fighting with each other in places and you can sort of sense these voices that that Beethoven must have been hearing when he composed it even though he could never hear it and so yeah it's out of that um, mental anguish that we that we get such great music it may be worth mentioning for your listeners Carolyn that there is easy to find online the Heiligenstädter Testament it was written in Heiligenstadt which is a suburb of Vienna where Beethoven spent the summers, and it, it is a suicide note written in 1802, a full 26 years before Beethoven died. And I think to, um, you know, piggyback on what Alan is saying, it's fascinating to me that a man could be so destroyed by his deafness in 1802, 
and write this letter that was then found in the back of his desk. He obviously never gave it to his brothers who he wrote it to. And in this letter just says, I must leave the earth. I cannot be a musician. This one thing that I must have to be a musician, which is my hearing, it's going from me. And I feel so ashamed. I can't even hear the birds in the forest. And it's just this outpouring of anguish in 1802 when he was only 32 years old. And then he, I don't know what caused him to want to continue his path, his journey, but that's when all his greatest music was written in the following 10 years after that, all the pieces that are most famous from his middle period. And it's just unbelievable if anyone wants to feel strengthened by someone moving through struggle and then overcoming that and thriving somehow, um, it's incredibly inspiring to read. Well, we have one minute left, and I would like you to tell our listeners what you have gained by doing this video of, of his Ninth Symphony and what you hope it gives to the people listening. Let's start with you, Mark. Uh, I am. Um... I'll say one thing. Uh, I listened to that four minutes of the uh, excerpt that, that we produced a thousand times, <laughs> hundreds of times, listening to small sections of it. And, put, and I will tell you, uh, um, there are very few pieces that you can listen to that many times and not be completely sick of it. And I would put it on right now and enjoy it just as much. And, and I mean, I, uh, that, that is, I mean, even the great, other great symphonies that we play, I think some of us are happy after the orchestra might play it four or five times at the most, and, we, and we're ready to go on to the next week and play some new music. But, but the Ninth Symphony and, and that final movement, uh, that just, it just can't be worn out. How about you, Isabel? I would hope that Ohioans and Clevelanders, in addition to to being inspired by the music, like Mark just mentioned, would also feel a sense of pride in knowing that their city has so many beautiful spots. I, I just want to mention how many more places we wanted to go to. And that Cleveland and Ohio has people willing to come out. You know, a lot of us hadn't seen each other and haven't seen each other since, but we were willing to join hands and be outdoors and masked and to come together and to make make music together and I think that's that has a lot of symbolic beauty and a lot that hopefully we can all feel nourished by and inspired and enthusiastic about where we live and who we are. And Alan before you give the last wrap up please tell folks your website so folks can find out more information about you guys. So I have a YouTube channel it's Alan Harrell Cello um, on YouTube, and I, I post some videos there um, every now and then, and I, um, some are some are um, you know funny, and some are, are more serious. Um, so yeah, that's how how you would find me. And to answer your question, um, I I did several other videos. I did the Bach thing that Isabel mentioned, and the Cleveland funk thing that you'd mentioned, Carolyn. And the thing that I got out of doing these projects is meeting people like you. And I, this is I've, this has gotten me out into the community, and so I knew we had a great city, and I knew we had great music to work with, and now I know like some of the great people in the community, and so it's been awesome to to bring people together in in this way, and and to to you know let people like Isabel said you know hold hands and 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 say we're all in this together, and we want we want our world to be better, and we want to do it together, and we want to let everybody enjoy your beautiful music. So thank you for joining us and have a great holiday week. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Bye-bye. In addition to our Friday 5 p.m. broadcast on WGRN.org, Grassroot Ohio will now air on Sundays at 2 p.m. at WCRSFM.org, Columbus, and at 4 p.m. at WEJPLP in Wheeling, Moundsville, West Virginia. You can also find us on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for joining us.